so today I'm talking about a Toyota with the P1346 code, what it is and how you could go about fixing it. And so what is a Toyota P1346 code? Well, it's a VVT sensor, camshaft position sensor, circuit range performance problem, bank one. And depending on the scan tool or the source of information, we can also give these definitions right here. And so what does this all mean? Well, basically, there's what's called variable valve timing that most modern vehicles, they now have this. And it's a really good system. It can adjust the timing when the engine's running, which can give better performance, give better gas mileage, things along these lines. There's also what's called a camshaft position sensor and that's monitoring the cam as it spins. And it's reporting this information back to the computer, which is using the information for timing. But when you get this P1346 code, the computer's seeing some kind of problem in all this. There's some kind of issue going on. And so it's going to be troubleshooted to know why. And if you have a V6 or V8 engine, the engine is going to have two banks. If you have a four cylinder engine, then you're only going to have one bank, which is going to be bank one. But if you have a V6 or V8 engine, then there's going to be two banks. Bank one is always the side of the engine with the number one cylinder. And the opposite of that is going to be bank two. Another thing to note is that these variable valve timing systems, that depending on the year, the make, they can be designed differently, components can be named differently, and things along those lines. So if you do go to work on a Toyota with the P1346 code, it's going to be a good idea to get a diagram for that specific vehicle. That way you know for sure what's going on. So be sure to keep that in mind. And so how is a Toyota P1346 code set? Well, the computer is going to be monitoring the cam as it spins with the camshaft position sensor. There's also going to be a sensor down on the crankshaft that's monitoring it as it spins. Every single time one of these notches is directly in front of that sensor, it's going to send a signal back to the computer. And the computer is going to be able to track the timing of the engine this way. The same thing is going to be happening down on the crankshaft. But when you get this P1346 code, this information is out of range for some reason. Everything's off more than it should be. Or possibly there's some kind of issue inside the variable valve timing that it's not responding when it's supposed to be. And so when that happens, the computer is going to set this P1346 code. And so what are some possible causes of a Toyota with the P1346 code? Well, the first thing to go and do, if possible, is go and check the engine oil. Even though this isn't going to be a direct cause of a P1346 code, engine oil flows through all the variable valve timing components. And if it's low or if it's really dirty, then that can damage the variable valve timing components, and that's going to cause problems. So while not a direct cause of it, whenever you're dealing with variable valve timing problems, it's always a good idea to go check the engine oil and be sure that's good. The next thing that could cause this is a bad camshaft position sensor or the wiring going to it. That sensor might have just gone bad and just be throwing everything off. Usually when that happens, you'll be getting another code. For example, like a P0341, camshaft position sensor A, circuit range performance bank one or single sensor. If you are also getting this code, then in that case, it's going to be a good idea to go do some tests on that camshaft position sensor along with the wiring going to it. I made full videos on how you go about doing that. I'll put a link down below in the description box if you want to check that out. And if you have two cams on each bank of the engine, dual overhead cam engine, then there's going to be two camshaft position sensors on each bank of the engine. And if you do, then the one that usually sets this P1346 code is going to be sensor A, the one located on the intake side of the engine. But the next thing that could cause this is the bad camshaft position sensor. And the next thing that could cause this is a bad variable valve timing component. And this would be something like a bad variable valve timing solenoid. Each cam on the engine is going to have a variable valve timing solenoid. There's also what's called actuators, which is what the timing chain or timing belt ride on. And if any of those components go bad, then that can cause problems. Again, usually if that happens, you'll get another code. For example, like a P0026 intake valve control solenoid circuit range performance bank one. If you were to also get this code, then in that case, it's going to be a good idea to go test that variable valve timing solenoid. Be sure it's good. Test the wiring going to it. These solenoids usually have 12 volts going to them, and the computer is going to control the ground side. I've made videos on this. I'll put a link down in the description box below if you want to check that out. Another thing to mention is that depending on the Toyota, there can also be what's called a VVT filter, which helps to keep any kind of debris out of the VVT system. And if that becomes clogged up, then that can also cause problems. And again, be sure to get a diagram for your system to know for sure what's going on in it. But if your system does have a variable valve timing filter, and that little filter gets clogged up, then that can cause a lot of problems. But the next thing that could cause this is a bad variable valve timing component. And the next thing that could cause this is some kind of wiring problem with the variable valve timing or with that camshaft position sensor also. If it's having some kind of wiring problem, that's also going to cause problems. This is usually going to have to do with the variable valve timing solenoid. Like I said before, usually there's 12 volts going to these solenoids and then the computer controls the ground side. But again, be sure to get schematics for your vehicle. It's also a good idea to go check for any blowing fuses or anything like this. Which fuse is controlling what is going to vary. It's going to depend on the Toyota year, things like that. But the next thing that's going to cause this is some kind of wiring problem. 
And the last thing on the list is going to be a bad timing component. And this is going to be something like a bad timing chain, timing belt, tensioner, or something like that. And what's going on with this is that the engine is going to have timing marks so that the cam lines up correctly along with the crank. But if one of these timing marks gets off for some reason, you say like a timing belt slips and this mark is a little bit before or a little bit after where it's supposed to be, then that's going to throw everything off and that's going to cause problems. Another thing that happens with these timing belts or timing chains is that when they get really old, they can become stretched out. So when the engine's running, sometimes since it's loose, it just throws the timing off just a little bit and that can trigger codes. There's also going to be a tensioner that keeps everything tight. And if there's some kind of issue with that, then that can also cause problems. But the last thing on the list is going to be a bad timing component. And so that's basically it. I just wanted to give a basic overview of how you go about fixing a vehicle with the P1346 code. If you have anything to add, please comment down below. If you have any questions, ask me and I'll try to answer them. If this video helps you, please click like, please click subscribe and have a good day.